Okay, shooting the North Star, shooting Polaris, this is method number two. This is not the primitive two-stick method. This one is a little more advanced, although it does take some time to set up. Over here on my left, we have what these days would be called an old-fashioned or antique surveyor's transit. These days, it's all electronic with GPS positioning and the whole thing, um, but real surveyors know how to use a device like this. A transit is different than a contractor's level. A contractor's level, you set it so the base is level, and all it does is swing 360 degrees in either direction, following the azimuth of the line being viewed through the telescope of the level. A transit is a little different. A transit has two rotations of motion. This will track azimuth in either direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, it will also tilt backward and forward to measure elevation or angular altitude. And this is why we want this for shooting the North Star, because the North Star is not out on the horizon. The North Star is up a bit into the heavens, so we need to tilt back to the elevation or angular altitude of the North Star, or Polaris. And we want to do both azimuthal adjustment and elevation adjustment till the crosshairs of the telescope are right smack on Polaris, right on the North Star. Now, the reason this takes a little more time to set up, there's a hook down here, you hang a plumb bob on. Typically, that plumb bob is for marking a point on the ground directly below the center of this. We actually might want to do this, but not necessary in this case. Once you get everything set where you want it on the ground, we have to level the base, and the base has adjustment screws. I turn, tighten one, loosen one here, tighten one, loosen one here. You work these in pairs, rocking the base of this until the base is perfectly level. Once the base is perfectly level, I find by sweeping azimuth, narrowing it in finer and finer, where I'm shooting toward with my line of vision, and I move up and down elevation, sweeping back and forth till I find my target with the crosshairs of the line of sight here. I have this, as we did with the two sticks, I have this aligned right on the small wind generator tower up to the second guy wire bracket, pretending that's our Polaris. Uh, now, here's the important thing. Once I have that marked, I'm going to set my azimuth to zero degrees. That's my zero degree mark. And remember, azimuth is only measured on the horizontal. So once I have it, I don't care if the telescope bounces up and down or not. But what I want is, I want that zero straight on, right to the North Star, zero degrees azimuth to be locked in. Then what I'll do is, I can rotate this until my protractor reads exactly 180 degrees. And guess what I'm pointing at? Directly straight south. So let's see if we can come in a little closer, get a look at this device. We'll see if we can look up the telescope and we'll see a good shot here on the protractor at the base of the uh, transit. Come on in. So here we are over on the side of the transit and you can see a transit does measure both azimuth and elevation. Now that we have aligned with the North Star, we don't care about elevation anymore. This can go to any angle we want. This ring, though, that has zero right on the 60-minute mark, that tells us that azimuthally, this is pointing directly geographic north. Now watch what happens as I rotate this. I go to 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, and when I go all the way around to 180 degrees, I will be pointing straight so, south. Interesting on this particular bezel, azimuthal bezel for this transit, it goes back to zero for true south also. So we went from zero degrees true north around to zero degrees true south. I'm pointing in exactly the opposite direction that I was before. And now if I look through my telescope, I am aimed straight out to true geographic south.